In his final 24 hours in the White House, Trump pardoned 143 people, including Steve Bannon and Lil Wayne. Then after leaving the White House for the last time, he traveled to Maryland to deliver a speech to his supporters at a military base. He took this as an opportunity to heap praise on his own administration. What we've done has been amazing by any standard. We rebuilt the United States military. We created a new force called Space Force. That in itself would be a major achievement for a regular administration. We were not a regular administration. We also got tax cuts, the largest tax cut and reform in the history of our country by far. Job numbers have been absolutely incredible. When we started, had we not been hit by the pandemic, uh, we would have had uh, numbers that would never have been seen. Already our numbers are the best ever. If you look at what happened until February a year ago, you're going to see incredible numbers start coming in if everything is sort of left alone. Be careful. Very complex. Be careful. But you're going to see some incredible things happening. And uh, remember us when you see these things happening, if you would. Remember us because uh, I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at elements of our economy that are set to be a rocket ship up. We got the vaccine developed in nine months instead of nine years or five years or 10 years or a long time. It was supposed to take a long time, many, many years to develop a vaccine. We have two out. We have another one coming almost immediately. And uh, it really is a great achievement. So. You should start to see really good numbers over the next uh, few months. I think you're going to see those numbers really skyrocket downward. So Trump clearly sees his presidency purely in numbers. So it was the stock market originally. I think he was very happy. The stock market, the numbers were going up. Um, then once the coronavirus numbers started going up, the stock market numbers started going down. Um, now a vaccine is rolled out. He thinks that you know, the deaths will start coming down from COVID and the stock market will go back up again. Um, he seemed, I think he's quite embittered, actually, that, that COVID-19 hit him um, when the stock market was doing oh so well, even if he did um, react to it appallingly. Um, Aaron, I want to bring you in on this to ask... You know, obviously, I don't think anyone who's ever appeared on Navarro Media is a fan of Trump's presidency. But on its own terms, do you think there are people who supported Trump or people in Trump's team or Trump himself who will feel that, you know, on by the, you know, the terms we set ourselves for this presidency, it's actually not gone that bad? Or do you think they'll see this as you know, mainly a wasted four years of, of failure? They've got the Supreme Court. You know, they, they made big changes there. Of course, that wasn't really because of Trump. That's because certain people you know, passed away. Um, apart from that, there's no real enduring legacy. I think I think he's right to be bitter in a way because there's. I think there's no way he loses if COVID doesn't happen. Um, you know, you look at the job numbers, you look at the stock market, all the things he was promising after 2016 kind of came good. Uh, if you look at, for instance, median wage of African-Americans actually, I think, outperformed the country at large. You know, I'm not going to sort of repeat the, the lines that he was saying, but that there was an element of truth to, to a recovery. Now, actually, to, for a significant part, that was based upon the sort of foundation built by the previous administration from 2008 to 2016. But nonetheless, that, that was where they were. And I think if you ask me in January, would he win? I would say I think he's going to win with the same the same sort of electoral college numbers as he did against Hillary Clinton in, in, in 2016. So I think I can understand why he's bitter uh, and also, I think he's kind of lost. You know, the way he was saying, it wasn't even like an attack line. He was saying, don't change anything. It, you know, he wasn't saying they're going to do this and they're going to screw it up and, you know, fuck them. He was saying, you know, don't leave it. He was. It's, it's him trying to sort of be, you know, I guess inclusive almost. The fact he didn't pardon Snowden, the fact he didn't pardon Assange, the fact that there wasn't any sort of big outrageous moves to protect himself and his family means you suspect there's a kind of deal between him and the democratic establishment, between him and the new the new president, effectively. And I don't think, I don't think Trump, they'll go after Trump, simply because, of course, and he said this quite explicitly, I think about a week ago, you know, today you can come after me, but the boot may well be on the other foot some sometime soon. And I, I think that will play on, on, on the minds of the Democratic Party elite. So, I think that was a big takeaway message of the last 24 hours, looking at, you know, his behavior, his choices, his rhetoric, is that ultimately, no, Donald Trump isn't going to go to jail. 
Um, and there seems to almost be a bit of a de-escalation in the last week. Uh, but I think he's right. I think he's right to feel bitter. I think it it was not likely he would lose had COVID not happened. I'm going to go to Nomi in one moment. But first of all, I want to show a clip, um, which was Donald Trump's closing statements today. And then afterwards, we're going to talk about what, what he might be planning next. <laughs> I will always fight for you. I will be watching. I will be listening. And I will tell you that the future of this country has never been better. I wish the new administration great luck and great success. I think they'll have great success. They have the foundation to do something really spectacular. And again, we put it in a position like it's never been before, despite the worst plague to hit since, I guess you'd say 1917, over a hundred years ago. And despite that, despite that, the things that we've done have been just incredible, and I couldn't have done them, done it without you. So just a goodbye. We love you. We will be back in some form. So everyone's obviously focusing on we will be back in some form. Um, what form do you think that will be, Naomi? <laughs> handcuffs um i don't know man uh you know while while the, it's likely that just to react to aaron before um it's likely that president biden will be spending all the time he can uh de-escalating the far right that probably if he were to prosecute or go after trump as much as we want that to happen it probably would escalate uh an already rabid far right that is acting out in ways that we haven't seen in decades uh with that being said the attorney general uh of new york is pursuing multiple avenues investigating uh the money uh from the trump you know don't forget he had his real estate companies based in new york city and uh, some say that this was the mechanism for foreign money to be harbored through uh, development deals and who knows what other kind of deals uh, we're not privy to at this point, but he is being investigated. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, you know, many are saying that he's going to come back in, in, in some sort of uh, media avenue. Uh, he pardoned Bannon, Steve Bannon. Let's keep that in mind. While he didn't pardon Assange and he didn't pardon Snowden, he did pardon Steve Bannon and many other people who have covered for him, helped him get to where he is. Uh, Roger Stone is clear now. He's out. So my guess is that they're not going away anytime soon. Uh, they're going to be investing in the new iteration of the right wing, which is a more populist right wing. They've talked about this Patriot Party. Uh, there's also this Movement for People's Party on the left, which seems to echo a lot of the uh, right wing uh, rhetoric in the in the last few weeks. Um, so it'd be curious to see how Bannon's strategy that he has used uh, in the EU, EU, as you guys know very well, uh, and and then in the UK and really all over the world, Philippines uh, might be duplicated here in the US. I don't really think there's a path, but I think it's dangerous. And that regardless of if there are electoral wins or not, even <clears throat> at the local level, there is still a danger in escalating what we saw happen at the Capitol. And there's a lot of money attached to it. There's a lot of grifters who ride that wave and make a lot of money. And I think that's probably Trump's agenda right now is to, to make a lot of money. And maybe you'll see one of his uh, children run for office in a state that's uh, more likely to vote for them. <laughs> Definitely not New York, probably not even Florida, to be honest at this point. We'll see. God help us. I'm assuming there won't be a new white nationalist party because, you know, I think that would only get created if it was expunged from the Republican Party and there's no sign that that's going to happen anytime soon. So if, if I were a white nationalist, I wouldn't jump ship now. I'd be standing to be the 2024 candidate because it seems well, at the moment like that's still the base of the Republican Party, right? I mean, it does. And I think that's Josh Hawley's strategy and Ted Cruz's strategy. Of course, you know, both of them want to be president and and they're still closing up to Trump's base. But McConnell doesn't want to be affiliated with that party. Doesn't mean that he wants to purge them because they need them electorally or they need at least the majority of them electorally. But if you saw what happened in Georgia, uh, <laughs> there's definitely a contingent who do not trust Fox News because Fox News is too mainstream and, and too statist. Uh, and they don't trust McConnell and they don't trust Republicans. They don't trust Mike Pence. They went to the Capitol to, to take 
Mike Pence, their own party leader, one of their own party leaders. So uh, they may have actually won the Senate races for the Democrats because they didn't want to support the Republican Senate nominees because they wouldn't, uh, uh, you know, they, they, they wouldn't follow Trump's orders in terms of overturning the election results in Georgia. So you're dealing with a different type of conservative now that I think we're all trying to understand. Um, but, you know, uh, it's 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 a dangerous place to be in. Um, I know people are talking about censorship a lot, but let's keep in mind that tech platforms have been shutting down extremist pages for decades, and they shut down leftist accounts all the time. So if if these folks, even on the left, are concerned with censorship by Twitter of a president, a former president um, who's inciting violence, you know, I think we have other other concerns, and and we've been on the slippery slope for a long time. Mm -hmm.